American Fall Festival Preview 2012. Normally, we are on stage and you see me, but I'm going to be a disembodied voice, like that voice in the haunted mansion. Ladies and gentlemen, without further delay, I would like to introduce to you our first pre-scene of the evening, Daniela Lido! Why 
a good-looking wife to receive the suitors pleasantly, and, by subtle suggestion, gently bring them to the point of proper presence so that their cases may receive more careful attention. A woman, by clever speech and prudent action, can, good, good, can get a good hand from one and a roll of cloth from another, and so make another give poetry or wine. But this poor dumb thing gets nothing at all. <laughs> While my fellow judges have their cellars and kitchens and stables and storerooms running over with good things all thanks to their wives, I hardly get where till to keep the pot boiling. Worst of it is, I'm losing my spirits, and my wits with it all. When I hold my wife... <laughs> when I hold my wife, a woman as beautiful as the finest carved statue. And quite as silent, that I'm sure. It makes me feel queer. <laughs> Uncanny. And worst yet, what with having a dumb wife, I'm going dumb myself. I find myself using signs as she does. The other day on the bench, I even pronounced judgment in pantomime. I don't know how I did it. And I even condemned a man to the galleys just by dumb show and gesticulation. Spin, yeah. Spin 
twice in a slow circle, and then three times as fast, and don't stop until my boredom is passed. Oh. Now look what you've done! You've ruined my fun! Oh, you're not the turn off. I'm so very sorry, you see. It wasn't my fault. Not one bit. It was Shut it! Ugh! You don't do anything right! I need you, Lucius Turtles, out of my sight! Why does he get to choose what goes on around here? He's sick and tired of living in fear. You're all the turtles, no king at all. I refuse that Lord comes to his call. I agree he's rude and needs to be taught. It's about time all of us turtles fought. There is nothing you can do to stop me! <laughs> I'm sick of your voices in your faces too. Now go get me a... Now get the carriage to my bed and get me my wrap. Come on. 
Island. And as I caught within myself in a fine head, there'd be no suspicion once they came. Did you circulate the report of Lady Brittle's intrigue with Captain Bostel? That's an fine trait of your ladyship to wish. In the <laughs> common course of things, I think it must use this package within four and twenty hours. And then, you know, the business is as good as done. Why, truly, Mrs. Clackett has a very pretty talent and a great deal of industry. True, madam. And it's, it has been especially tolerable in her day. To my knowledge, she has been the cause of six matches being broken off, and three sons who being disinherited, and two divorces. Nay, I have much more than one seen the part of her a tete a tete in the time. <laughs> Parties, perhaps, had never seen each other's face in the course of their lives. She certainly has talents, but her manner is gross. Tis you oh. true. She generally designs well, has a free tongue and a bold invention, but her outlines often extravagant. She wants that <laughs> mellowness of sneer, that delicacy of tint, which distinguishes your ladyship scandal. You are partial, Snake, but I have no hypocrisy to deny the satisfaction I bring from the No, no pleasure equal to reducing of others to the level of my own reputation. Nothing can be more natural. But Lady Snowell, I confess, I have not lost yet your motives. I conceive you mean with respect to my neighbor, Sir Peter Teasel, and his family? Then at once to unravel this mystery, I must inform you that love has no share whatsoever in the intercourse between Mr. Surface and and no! His real attachment to Maria, <laughs> or fortune, finding that his brother, a favored rival, he's been obliged to match his pretensions and profit by my assistance. Yet, still I am more puzzled. Why you should interest yourself in his success? Heavens, how dull you are! Can I surmise the weakness which I hitherto, through shame, have concealed even from you? Must I confess that Charles, that libertine, that extravagant, that bankrupt of fortune and reputation, for he it is who I am thus anxious and malicious, and to gain mode sacrifice everything. Your conduct appears consistent. But Lady Snowell, how come you and Mr. Surf are so confidential? I know him to be artful, <gasps> selfish, and malicious. In short, a sentimental name, while Sir Peter passes for youthful miracle of good sense and benevolence. With the assistance of his sentiment and hypocrisy, he has brought Sir Peter entirely into interest with regard to Maria. Well, poor Charles has no friend in the house. Though I fear he has a powerful one in Maria's heart, for whom we must direct our speed. Oh, here's company coming. I'll go and write that letter I mentioned to you. Oh! 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 Maria, my dear, how do you do? What's the matter? Oh, this is degrade love of mine. Sir Benjamin Bad White and his uncle Crabtree, so I slipped away and I told him. Is that all? If my brother Charles had been at the party, madam, perhaps you would not have been such alarm. Nay, now you are severe. For I dare swear the truth of the matter is. Maria, I heard you here. But my dear, what has Sir Benjamin done that you should avoid him so? Oh, he has done nothing but little in his acquaintance. I and his. And the worst of it is that there is no, there is no advantage in not knowing him, for he'll kill the stranger just as fast as his best friend and his uncle just wants to. Nay, but we should make allowance. Sir Benjamin is a wit and a poet. We have pride, envy, and pride. Now, Maria, here's a character to your taste. For though Mrs. Candor is a little talkative, everybody allows her to be the best natured and best cerebral. Yeah, and she has a girl's affectation. I'll take that too, Madam Sneerwell. But whenever I see my friends, I never think of them in such danger as when Candor and the taste very different. Hush! Here she is!
said, Darling, how are you? Grandma, I love you now, but I'm having a hard time understanding you. Oh, you're yeah. mine. Okay. Oh, hey, Mom. Why do I have to live with her? It's super boring here. All we do is just play bingo and watch soap operas all day. Plus, I never understand a word she said. It's so annoying. Skyler, help! Help! She needs me right now. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Really, Grandma? Must she get tangled in your knitting thread again? <laughs> Here you go. 
Is this that lady? Catherine? Oh my goodness, look at me, I'm young. I can talk and walk, and I'm finally able to do everything I've ever wanted to do. I'm young, Cat but Catherine is still old. But Skylar is still, but Skylar's old. <laughs> That's cool, but I'm not. Oh, Skylar, my dear, she's old. I'd better get home. Thank you, Catherine. You sure are great. You're welcome. Oh, baby, baby, baby. <laughs> I went shopping. I want to see. Well, I got them for you anyways. Thanks. <laughs> Grandma, I'm sorry. I know I should treat you nicer. It's just when I was forced to move here, I had to throw all my dreams and all my friends on hold to take care of me. My mom said a, a nurse would cost a lot. Knowing how you honestly feel helps me understand that. I love you and I love you. I love you too, Allie. I'll go see what I can do to change this. It says here, all we have to do is both drink this before bed and it'll all disappear.
Oh, don't be such a baby. <laughs>
one rabbit, sire. Well, how, how does it work? This, it's the latest rage of our technology. Now, 
grouching in the tulips. Here, unicorn. Me! He pulled up a lily and gave it to the unicorn. Then he went upstairs and roused his wife. Wow. <laughs> the unicorn ate a lily. She sat up in bed and looked at him coldly. You're a booby, and I'm going to have you put in the booby hat.
the family of Dale affair. We'll settle it later and reflections from Mulan. Daniela Vita. What a pleasant occupation these sentences are. Very good indeed. I mean, what could be more delightful? Go to an assembly or to somebody's wedding and you sit down naturally. <laughs> Up a flower like a doll or a magazine picture, and then suddenly up runs a gentleman. May I have the happiness, miss? <laughs> well, if he's a man of wit or a military individual, you simply drop your eyes here and accept. If you please, with pleasure. dancing with students or a government office clerks. Oh, but it's the real thing to dance with army men. <laughs> oh, their mustaches and their epaulets and their uniforms and on some of them even spurs little bits of bells. Oh, charming. <laughs> Only it's killing the tiresome that they don't wear a saber. I mean, it's strange if I take it. Why do they take it off? If only the soldiers themselves could see how much more fascinatingly they'd shine if they were just to wear a saber. Oh, you'd never see anything more charming. I wonder why it is with so many ladies sitting with their feet under their chairs. There is simply no shame in learning how to dance. Although I was a little bashful for the teacher, I learned how to dance in perfectly just 20 lessons. <laughs> oh, I can just see it now. A soldier walking in with the butlers coming in and candles lit everywhere. And the butlers wearing white gloves having dinner. But then comes a waltz. See, I haven't learned how to waltz. I mean, I, I guess I can practice now at leisure. Okay. Well, this is nothing. An army man. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Oh, I forgot how! <laughs> and now, move on. Look at me, I will never pass for a perfect bride or a perfect daughter. Now I see I'm not meant to play this part. If I were to be Truly myself, I would break my family's heart. Who is that girl I see? 
know. I, I wonder what would happen if that little box disappeared. Does she care about her reputation? No wonder. No one gives her a little salutation. I wonder what's in that box. <laughs> Maybe just a bunch of rocks. <laughs> I know that they're staring at me, but don't they have a little decency? This box is very dear to me, and I don't care what other people see in me. They can talk and they can stare. It's not like I'm going to care. If only they understood how dedicated I am to drama and how much this box is important, then maybe they wouldn't be so hesitant. I mean, I feel sorry for the less fortunate, but I honestly can't be that compassionate Drawing people are the same. All in all, they're pretty lame. Besides, Monica looks like a lumberjack taking care of that precious snack. I wish I could get to know her better. Instead of listening to all these rumors, I think drama swell. Please don't send me to hell. <laughs> Monica seems like a nice girl. If only she didn't want to make people want to hurl. <laughs> and what's with that? What's so special about that box? I'm a curious guy, and that's no lie. I'm worn. I'm torn. Am I, am I really gonna befriend her or not? Am I really gonna let her hail on my parade? <laughs> yeah. Just look at her. Absolutely repulsive. We agree on everything and anything. Stick with me and you'll stay more popular, perhaps a little more muscular. Face. 
face. It ruins my mood. Uh, I understand where you're coming from. I probably seem like scum. I just wanted to say, I think you're quite beautiful, and you have every right to be beautiful. I honestly don't care for what you have to say. Well, come on, babe. Let me take your heart away. <laughs>
Oh, look. Little Miss Rags decided to join the party. And what is she wearing to this party? Rags! She's like Cinderella before they fixed her ugliness. Still working off your dad's gambling debt? Well, I think you missed a spot. Why do you have to be so mean? He's never done anything to you. Oh, she's trying to lecture us to death again. Let's leave before these two dorks rub off on us. Really? You two are perfect for each other. Rags and wheels. What a great combination. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm used to it. I've been bullied a lot. I'm just so tired of being so defenseless. Yeah, I've noticed how people bully you. It's awful. Hey, maybe if we stick together, we can forget about what anybody else thinks. You're such a nice person. People don't usually take the time to talk to me. Well, that's their loss. You seem like a pretty cool guy. Thanks, but why did you stand up for me? Why even talking to someone like me? You must have tons of friends. Why bother helping someone like me? Well, I don't have many friends. Actually, I don't have any. No one wants to be friends with a girl that cleans the school to make money for her family. Come on. You can't judge someone by how they look. And you can't judge them if you don't get to know the person. Hey, what do you say? Friends? Friends. Aw, oh, did you hear that? Brads and wheels are friends now. How adorable! It's like a legion of losers. The bronze and the brains. Didn't think we were going to back off that easy, did you? Stop it. I don't need you to stand up for me anymore. Ooh, watch out. Geekville's going to kill us all. You're only upset because your mom found out your dad was cheating on her. And now, they're getting a divorce. They're getting a married marriage.
with my hand. Will you do with me? I think he's I think he's saying goodbye. Why is he kissing me? I think he's saying goodbye. Will he do with me? He buried my knees next to my mother's front steps. He did it in the middle of the night. He'll for bury you? In little holes? In damn little holes. Then he will forget. He will forget. His memory's broken? Forget. He'll forget and look out his window. As window? Yeah. Yeah. And 
old times, but I have to go do something. So shoot, shoot, go.
My whole life has been one big unanswered question, and I don't want any more secrecy. You said your date aunt's name was Sophia, right? Well, why else would she give my mother money? Don't you see? This hasn't really been my secret. Bill, are you my father? Oh, I think so. You know what's next, right? Bill, will you give me a win tomorrow? I'll feel like a proper bride if I just walk down the aisle with my father. Please, Bill, please. All right. Selfie! Look, I won't beat around the bush. I know why I'm here. And let me tell you, I think it's brilliant. I've always wanted a little daughter. No, Sam. And a big one's even better. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. Does your mother know? No. Good, good, good. Listen, I'm giving you away tomorrow, and I don't care what Donna says. No, Sam. Yeah. Right. Sophie! I finally got it! Talk about soul in the uptake. I'm your dad. What? Harry? The betting shop now good and proper. That's why you sent me the invitation. You wanted your old dad here to walk you down the aisle. Well, I won't let you down. I'll be there. Woo! <laughs> Anyway, we've got our whole lives ahead of us. 
Let's just get off this island and travel the world. I love you. I take it the wedding's canceled. Well, bloody typical. Wait 20 years for your dad and three come along all at once. I have not got a clue of what's going on. Hold on. Why waste a good way? <gasps> Are you nuts? I'm not a bigamist. Neither am I. I'm a divorced man who's loved you for 21 years. Ooh. And ever since I got on this island, and ever since I got on this island, I've been bursting to show you how much I do. Come on, Donna. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Say it, Donna, let's try it. You love me, don't deny it. <laughs> Thank you. 